Hi everyone, welcome to part two of my series of great books to show you that are really good for the kids who don't really like to read just yet. So now I'm actually touching on a lot of really good books for ages six and up, so all the way up to preteen. Uh, I'm actually gonna start with a sticker book, which you may not think would be something that would encourage your kids to read, but however, a lot of them have a lot of really unique uh, details to them and some really cool factual stuff. So this is filled with a bunch of facts and figures, of course, all in the First World War for this one. And I'm gonna show you um, just how much text we're looking at. So you get a ton of illustrations, of course. These are all the placements for the stickers. And uh, you get a lot of bite-sized chunks of information. Um, and some just really cool, interesting details for kids who might be into history and just um, maybe some of those um, like military vehicles and all that kind of thing. So we got a lot of airplanes in here. Of course, it's going to be uh, tanks and that sort of thing. So you get a lot of really cool stickers, but of course you also get um, some great tidbit information and just some really great things for them to learn about. Uh, so there's a number of sticker books that are actually really handy in that way. And of course, we have other books that are really great. Maybe your kids are really into eating and maybe even interested into how you're making your meals. So this is a really cool way to actually get them into maybe reading the recipe out to you, going through the steps with you, doing a lot of things. This cookbook is fantastic. Everything is broken down. You get to um, go through several different types of topics here. So we've got um, fruits and vegetables and of course we start off with some great um, information at the beginning kitchen safety and stuff like that um, so we always start each section with um, some more information so this is about fruit how to choose your fruit washing fruit of course uh, and then we go right into um, dairy and eggs and of course all the way up you get some great stuff pasta meat uh, bread and pastry and of course everyone's favorite right especially your kids going to be cookies and cakes. So this is just a really great way to not only give them a treat, but it encourages them to go through it um, with you and reading it out. So just another great book to really get them in the habit of reading stuff. So I highly recommend that book. As well, we have for our younger readers, this is a really great series, The Osborne Discovery. So it's kind of a step up from our beginner series. And it's just a, a lot more detail on this nonfiction topics really beautiful illustrations. We get a lot more information in these ones than the smaller uh, beginner's books. And of course, as you can see, beautiful illustrations, beautiful photographs, um, and not a whole lot of text at once. So they can kind of go through it at their own pace, but just a lot of really cool facts about whatever the topic is. So I know that we can, uh, you can get this in trains as well. There's other topics. So it's just a really great fun series um, to really touch on topics that kids are typically interested in. And as well, uh, for those kids who are more uh, tech savvy and that's kind of their thing, we've got actually books to help them be more creative with that stuff. So build your own websites for beginners. Uh, we have a couple of different ones in this kind of thing. We've, um, we've got coding books as well. So that's actually really unique. So it just goes into what is building a website. So it's got it kind of uh, broken down into sections. Um, so it's not like big paragraphs at a time. So it's really easy to go through and read. And of course, this might just be something to really help them. Of course, covers things like JavaScript in here. Um, you know, maybe creating their own thing, you know, really set themselves apart from the things that maybe they're looking at online. So they can do their own thing and create their websites about whatever they want to create it about. So I really love that idea as well. And then we also have some of our coloring books. Um, these are more advanced than um, the majority of our coloring books. We typically refer to these as coloring books for adults um, because of the very fine detail. But as well, we actually get quite a bit of information about these topics too. So this one, of course, is the Native American patterns to color. And of course, we get um, some really cool information about different tribes in this book. Um, get some stuff here about tribal masks. So it's really interesting to go through and see it. Um, sand paintings in this one. So you just get some really nice um, facts from things that maybe you wouldn't um, expect out of a coloring book. So I just really like the extra added detail in there, things to learn as you're coloring and, and just doing a really fun activity, really soothing activity. And as well, 
we have a couple of books that are really great for the kids who like to be on the go. So the Never Get Bored series, we have a number of them out now. These books are really great for ages like seven and up. And um, this one, Never Get Bored, is really great for indoors and they have some outdoor stuff as well. So it just has a bunch of activities. And as you can see, it's not a whole lot of text, but of course it has a lot of instructions. Um, and sometimes some background things to really help them understand why they're doing certain uh, steps of this. So it's just a lot of fun, a lot of science stuff in there as well. And then of course we have Never Get Bored Outdoors, um, which really encourages them to kind of take this on the go. And there's a lot of cool things that they can do on rainy days where it's about outdoors, but they're definitely doing it inside. Um, but there's a lot of really cool things that they're outside and about, um, encourages them to write about things, to read about things, um, and just a lot of really fun activities to do. And then of course we have books like Animal Quizzes. So as you would expect, they're really, really short, but they can go through and read them at their own pace and they're just fun and silly. We have travel quizzes and other books as well. Um, so a lot of really nice illustrations and it just really helps in encouraging them to read on a more regular basis. So definitely be warned that you're gonna be quizzed a lot with these books, um, but they are a lot of fun and definitely a lot of really uh, cool things to learn in there. And then a step up from as well, the beginners from before that I showed for the earlier readers, we've got from our reading program, um, these types of books. So these I really like because they actually touch on uh, a lot of people from history. Uh, so key figures and of course, uh, places and time, things like that. This one, of course, uh, Tutankhamun. So we've got more of a chapter book base thing, but it's really small chapters, really nice, clear, easy to read text and really nice photographs to go through it and really emphasize what was going on as well. Just like the beginner series, a lot of illustrations too, because of course we don't really have photographs of that time. So you'll see a lot of that in these books too, because they are about earlier, earlier times and earlier people. But as you can see, the text is very nice and easy to read. And so this is a really great series as well if your kids are interested in uh, the different topics that they have available for this series. And it just really helps encourage them to get into reading more and researching more about it. Um, for example, another one would actually be some of our spotters guides. So Rocks and Minerals is the one that I have. It's actually a, like a very flexible paperback little book. And I'll show you here, you can get different ones. And it's a very similar thing. So a lot of beautiful illustrations and photographs, um, not a whole lot of text um, per layout. So just some real bite-sized chunks of information. Um, but it really gives some really great detail as to things. And you know, you can use this for a number of things. If you live in different places where you can actually go out and find some of these rocks, uh, that would be really special, really unique thing for you to actually do with your kids. And then we have another series. So this is our Beginners Plus series. Uh, so it actually touches on some really cool topics um, that kids are super interested in these days. So we've got artificial intelligence. This one is drones. Really breaks it down. As you can see, there's not on some pages a whole lot of text, but still a lot of information. So again, more photographs, real detailed explanations as to um, ins and outs of the content. So just really like the series. It's a flexible, uh, flexible bound cover. So I really like that. And it's, um, really entertaining. You actually learn a lot from this series. I really love the artificial intelligence book. That one is probably my favorite. It just covers a lot of really great things for kids. And then as well, we have, this is probably good for ages seven and up. We've got our pet guides. So we've got, um, cats and kittens as well as more as well as a couple of other ones it's a nice beautiful hardcover book if your kids are trying to convince you to get a pet I would definitely start off with something like this um, so we get here for this one of course for example choosing a dog what will I need it's first days feeding playing staying healthy out and about brushing bathing etc so many other things um, and just really prepares them for what it's going to entail. And then of course, once they're old enough to be reading this sort of stuff, it's really great for them to maybe take on more responsibilities if you already have a pet. And so it's a really great thing to really introduce them to that. 
and get them to really understand you know the responsibilities that they're going to take on now that they're old enough so i really like this series i think it's super cute and of course you get a lot of nice uh photographs of the particular animal it's about as well so again this is dogs and puppies beautiful little hardcover book um so great for uh young first time pet owners and as well we have um some really cool books that are probably very content specific but they are like handbooks so we've got the spies handbook we've got pharaoh's handbook and as well the astronauts handbook so if you have kids that are interested in space and this is really great for age seven and up too um it does have more to read in it but again it, it is definitely going to be right on topic um if they're into this sort of stuff want to know what it's all about to be an astronaut probably don't want to sit down and read a bunch of research material but this is just a real cool way to do it and of course it's actually in association with um, the UK Space Agency which I thought was really neat um, and you'll find the other ones are very similar as well so what it was all about to be a pharaoh um, and then as well for this spy one which is actually quite cute this one is actually a little bit thicker of a book just gives you a lot of really cool things you can do and some spy activities you can actually work on so that is really really cool um, and a lot of stuff to actually uh, read in here too so it's a really great book to just encourage them to get more involved with books and as well we have of course books about things to make and do so we have a ton of craft books um, and of course they go through uh, the experiments and the activities they all have directions and some background information so those are really great um, for getting them to be uh, reading more and just um, kind of independently doing their own activities too. So really like this series. Uh, this one is the 50 science things to make and do. So of course this works really well uh, for people doing homeschooling plans too. Just some really cool things that you can get your kids doing and understanding the science behind it as well for the girls who typically for fiction they aren't really intrigued by the characters and not really into the story uh, we do have a number of books that actually have super inspirational stories about young girls and uh, this series in particular the six chelsea walk series is all about different times and throughout history at this one particular address six chelsea walk and the different girls that have lived there and what they have gone through so this one is girls on the up and as you can tell from the cover, it actually is about fashion, music, and art galleries, and painting, and about the moon landing. It covers, I'm not going to give it away, it's actually, if you want to read the summary for it, you can definitely put that up. Uh, but this is a real intriguing book, and I can't wait to actually grab the others and read those too. Um, but the text on it is definitely more of a chapter book. So it's going to be more and more detailed for sure. It's going to be a good read. Um, but this is great if uh, you've got young girls who just aren't really intrigued by what they're reading fiction wise. Uh, so these are fiction stories and they're super inspirational and a really great way to start. As well for girls that are probably about nine and up, uh, these ones are really great for kids who have a lot of questions or maybe don't know really what to ask or who to ask it to. Um, so we have them for boys and for girls. So we have the series Growing Up for girls or for boys and then what's happening to me uh, for boys and for girls. So I'll go through each one. This one is a little bit thinner. It's um, very easy to go through. It's kind of broken down the text and there's a lot of illustrations and things in here. Uh, so for example, in this particular book, when you look at the contents at the very front, it's about getting hairy and shaving and feelings and eating and let's see, and how it's actually different for girls. So I like that in each one, it actually touches on, um, this is what you're going through, but that's not necessarily what the girls are going through and then vice versa in the girls one for the boys. Now in this particular one, it's obviously a lot more detailed. It's probably going to be more for your uh, little bit of a, a an advanced reader who's used to reading is going to want to go through it. Um, obviously there's just some minor illustrations. It is almost entirely text. Um, and this one is going to cover a lot of things. So it actually is going to cover things like STIs, 
hormonal things, relationship, sex. So it is definitely more detailed. So you, if those are things you, you want to talk to your kids about first, then I would definitely encourage you to do that. Um, but they are great books. If your kids, if that's what they want to read about is just things that are going to answer the questions that they have. I definitely recommend that. All right, and then my last couple of books here, I've got some real nice hard covers to show you. This is The Adventures of Robin Hood. It's a graphic novel. So of course, really great for the kids who aren't into reading a lot, but they really do like comic books and illustrations. So as you can see, we do get some really great illustrations in this series. We have a number of different graphic novels. We have Hamlet. We also carry some in French. Um, and so, as you can tell, not a whole lot of text going on at a time, but you do get a really great story from it. So the content in these are just really nice. Robin Hood, of course, is definitely a favorite story for so many kids. And then to go back to some factual stuff, um, this is a really great series for kids who just want some bite-sized, really cool chunks of information. Uh, so this is for the advanced reader. So this is really great for reading level, probably at about age eight and up. And they're really great for adults too. Actually, all the ones that we have, I have probably five or six on hand. They're all mine because they're absolutely fascinating. So 100 Things to Know About Space is actually my favorite. And you don't have to read them in order. You can kind of flick through it. It can be a coffee table book. It's got some real fun illustrations. They're always bright and colorful. And you just learn a lot of really cool things. Like this one in particular, Neil Armstrong's boots are still on the moon. And it just actually goes through a ton of other stuff that we've left up there, including uh, toothbrushes and dollar bills. And there's a family photograph up there still. Um, how many helmets are still there? Um, and I think there was something about bags of waste, which we don't need to go into, but there's just so many things that they've left up there. And I had no idea before reading this book. Um, so it just gives you a lot of really great stuff to go through. And as you can tell, it's not a whole lot of text at a time, but it's just super fun to flick through and to learn all about. Uh, so that is 100 things to know, or yeah, to know about. And of course you can get other titles like food, saving the planet, uh, the human body, history, oceans is a new one for us. So there's so many great ones. I'll probably have to do a video just on this series because they're so great. So these are a lot of great books that you can definitely use um, to judge and go by, you know, maybe what your child is interested in, maybe things that they would be more inclined to read because the important thing is to get them reading and definitely encourage them to continue reading the things that they are already interested in and that they might be picking up. Um, in my opinion, never discourage them and try to get them to put down a book. So whatever they're interested in reading right now, um, try to find similar items to it and um, hopefully you'll have a very advanced reader on your hands in no time. Thanks for watching.